Each year, fewer hunters and anglers take to the woods, fields, and streams. Without those hunters and anglers, who speaks for wildlife and wildlife habitat? This is a concern to wildlife managers in Wyoming. At stake are Wyoming's outdoors tradition. The balance between wildlife populations and suitable habitat and funding for wildlife management. We have these beautiful places that these kids have never seen and it's our job to get them out here and show them what we have. We'll explore programs to boost outdoors participation this week on Wyoming Wildlife TV. Participation in the outdoors has declined in the last 20 to 30 years, even in Wyoming, where hunting and fishing fish. represent a way of life. We are losing people enjoying the outdoors, but not at the same rate as they are nationally. The national trend is much higher. The aging population, their hunters dropping off, and the recruitment of newer replacement hunters is not keeping pace. Wyoming is losing hunters and anglers uh, presently because we have to compete with so many other things that are going on in youth and parents' lives from football, basketball, dance, soccer, all the other things that are related to youth activities. It's a constant battle for the parents to find the time to uh, take that time out and enjoy hunting and fishing and and spending that kind of time out there. When I was a young boy, growing up in a one stoplight town in southwestern Wyoming, no male greeted another male between the dates of September 1 and November 30 with any phrase other than, got your elk yet? There was a cultural expectation. We never thought about it. We certainly never called it a cultural expectation, but it certainly was. We no longer view it that Dollars generated by hunters and anglers are the cornerstone of funding for wildlife management. Well, the role that hunters and anglers play in managing wildlife is twofold. One is the harvest of the animal, and the other role is they help finance Wyoming's managing of the wildlife. Their monies, and largely uh, antelope and deer, but there are elk, bear, and all the fishing licenses, those kinds of things. That all helps finance and fund our budget. Hunters and anglers pay for the lion's share of all wildlife management in Wyoming. People enjoy the wildlife management and the benefits of it, even though they don't really c contribute. We are limited by the amount of money people spend within our state and spend on licensing. The more they spend, the more money we have to put back into wildlife-related things outside of the hunting and fishing, such as the educational programs, which a lot of those we have had to cut back over the years because of lowered financing. Wildlife management, as it's currently constituted, depends not just for its funding base, but for its political base on the advocacy of hunters and anglers. Without those hunters and anglers, who speaks for wildlife and wildlife habitat? Who funds the things that conserve wildlife and wildlife habitat? Our wildlife management programs rely on a nucleus of people with an interest. And if there were not enough people in the population with the hunting and fishing and just wildlife, nature in general interests, then it's not going to get the financial support needed to carry on the programs. So it's up to us, the hunters and anglers of the 21st century, to strengthen ourselves, to teach our youth, to engage people in the things that we believe are important. Because without them, we will lose them. There are a number of reasons for the decline in participation of fishing and hunting. 
the way things have changed in Wyoming over the last 20 to 30 years is we've become more industrialized, lost a lot of our farming and ranching. There's been more urbanization, having less time available. I believe uh, there are people moving into Wyoming from a d diverse backgrounds. The traditional Wyoming ideals are not quite like they used to be. Their interests are different with wildlife. They probably come to Wyoming to enjoy the outdoors. However, it doesn't necessarily have to be hunting and fishing oriented. It is still there. It is still important. But it is not as important, and it is not important in the same way. My mentor in hunting was my father and his friend. They viewed hunting as a way of putting meat on the table. It was very utilitarian. It was very important. It was the high point of their year, but they viewed it that way. Too often now, I think we see hunters who view this more as an opportunity to go play with toys. High dollar toys, big boy toys, but toys nonetheless. I'm not confident that that kind of lukewarm attachment to hunting will support it, will sustain it in the future. Recruiting next season's hunters and anglers when we return. The recruitment of youth is the key to the future of outdoor recreation. Kids need to feel a connection to what's around them. Kids really need to understand that whatever they do impacts the wildlife and the streams and the water and the health of our habitats. What we can do to increase the numbers of people that hunt and fish and recreate in Wyoming is to encourage the youth to participate more in what's going on. Show them all the things that, they're, that are available to them. Have them take hunter education and learn how to exist out in the wild, how to be part of the wild. We're losing our kids to the outdoors because they're into the technology and they're in front of a TV, they're playing the Wii's, they're doing all of these fun things, they're fun things, but we're not getting enough kids out involved in this. We have these beautiful places that these kids have never seen and it's our job as educators and parents to get them out there and show them what we have. It's stimulating those kids. That's, that's where it starts. And then the adults have to participate with that and, and just keep after that, build it and build it and so that they can enjoy what we have to offer. There's so many distractions that when I was a kid growing up, we didn't have. So we need to, when it, kids are young, uh, get them exposed to the outdoors, find some way that they can succeed and uh, have a good fun time with the outdoors initially. I think the biggest advice that I have for parents to get their kids outside is just take the time to do it. Um, people that learn about being safe outdoors, that take the time to be ethical and responsible when they're outside, can have some tremendous family building experiences. The Game and Fish Commission passed our regulation for the Hunter Mentor Program, which will allow um, people who have not taken a hunter safety class the opportunity to hunt with a qualified mentor prior to going to a hunter education class. So he can basically circumvent the state law for one year to Try before you buy, basically. Hopefully, sportsman groups will pick up on this and offer their membership as uh, qualified mentors. There are a lot of kids out there that, from single parent families, nobody in their family is there to get them interested in hunting and fishing. I would love to see local clubs, whether it be the Sundance Rod and Gun Club or statewide organizations, pick up on this and have it as a community service program. Take a kid hunting. The department's Becoming an Outdoors Woman program focuses on increasing female participation in outdoor activities. Becoming an Outdoors Woman program, um, shortened as BOW, is a program designed for women year aged 18 and older that want to come out and learn about the outdoors, to get them excited about being outside and really getting women introduced to being comfortable when they're outside doing different skills. I'm, I'm from Wyoming, this is my home. And there are so many things that I want to be able to do and did not have the, the ability or, or have a, a way that I knew how to, to find someone to teach me. 
I just was not aware of, of any other way to get these skills. And when I heard about it, I was so excited and I shot my, my paperwork off the very same day. <laughs> Our Becoming Outdoors Women program offers a variety of things for women to choose from, different activities from fishing to canoeing to wildlife viewing um, to basic hunting, firearm safety, so they can really get here, be in a safe, comfortable environment and a non-threatening environment that they can come out, learn about it and see what works with them. The way that it opens your mind to new experiences, oh, yeah. right that it gives you confidence that you can be out here, the comfort that you get and the independence and the freedom. Um, bring a friend, share the wealth. Teachers workshops and youth camps aim at improving outdoors education and benefit students inside of and outside of the classroom. When teachers come here they have an opportunity to learn about map and compass which can translate to doing map reading and geography and mathematics in the classroom. They come out and they learn about survival and they learn about how to build a fire, how to go onto um, forest service land or state land and do what's called tread lightly. Um, how do you go on and do activities on these public lands and not cause a huge impact? It gives me pride and it gives me a passion to be able to offer more and more programs that we can give to people to really provide them those opportunities to learn about what we do as a game and fish department and learn about all of the great resources that we have here in Wyoming. The Oreo program is another example of the effort to raise outdoors awareness and increase outdoors participation among Wyoming's youth. It's for the kids and it's to educate the kids and to make sure that they know what Wyoming is about, what the outdoors is about, yeah. Yeah. and how to do things safely and enjoy the outdoors. So these kids have learned all these little activities that are Wyoming. And we do shotgun. Well, we do bird hunting here. We do a lot of hunting. We do a lot of fly fishing, a lot of spin rod fishing. There's just all the things kids need to know about why we live in Wyoming is at this class. We went out and to an area where it's safe and we got the little doves and they went up and we just aim and shoot. The first two times I was jolting, so uh, I got a little scared after first, but the next time I just wanted to keep on going and going. They learned some of our local history, cultures, things like that. So it is, it's really, to me, very important for these kids to get this learning process down. You know, you have a problem student in school. You bring them to the outdoors, their behavior, I mean, they just suck it in and all of a sudden it's like, wow, this is what this kid needs. He loves it. So it's amazing when you're, when you're teaching kids how you get the rest of the state and the community to come together to, uh, to educate these kids. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department's efforts to improve access to recreational lands when Wyoming Wildlife TV returns. A highlight of the year for many hunters, anglers, and other wildlife enthusiasts is the Wyoming Hunting and Fishing Heritage Expo, a three-day celebration of wildlife and the outdoors lifestyle. Every year, more than 10,000 people visit the expo, including thousands of school kids. Expo visitors learn about Wyoming's rich wildlife heritage, the importance of conservation, and ethical and responsible use of our outdoor hey, resources. We have the Wyoming Game and Fish Expo, which is held here in Casper. Uh, we have three days of fun for kids. We show them all the other things that are involved with the out of doors. We run the whole gamut, touchy feely hides, how to do everything from making a fire with fire sticks to calling elk. And it's all free, and it's the biggest single weekend that uh, we get a chance to uh, be involved with the youth. One reason for the decline in outdoor recreation is decreased public access, and the Wyoming Game and Fish Commission is committed to remedying the access problem. Public access is, uh, again, a very high priority in terms of recruiting new hunters and anglers, 
And our commission owns uh, a little over 400,000 acres of lands that the department manages and our commission either owns or administers. Those lands are critical, just as are other public lands in the state. There's roughly 50% of the state of Wyoming is public land. However, not all of that public land is accessible. It might be um, behind some private land or surrounded by private land. And the only way you can access that property would be uh, by granting access from the private landowner. You know, in an area where access might be limited to a, a large chunk of national forest, you know, we may have several walk-in areas that butt right up against that national forest. The hunter can then go onto the national forest across that private land in addition to hunting the private land itself. The opportunity in, in some areas is, is very large. It's a high priority, our, our working with private landowners primarily and obtaining easements, public access easements for hunting and fishing. Our commission has over 370 miles of, of easement areas where we have public hunting and fishing available. Uh, those are critical to maintain public access so that folks can get out and enjoy fishing and hunting. Partnerships with landowners are critical to securing more access, and the Game and Fish Department's Access Yes program is the funding mechanism that provides easements for access through private lands. During the 1990s, access was one of the hot topics for hunters and anglers statewide, and the department began looking at ways in which to offset that loss of access. And what they started was the Private Lands Public Wildlife Access Initiative. They went out, enrolled landowners, uh, basically conducted business as usual and at the end of those three years they evaluated it and they evaluated it from the department employee standpoint, from the landowner standpoint and then from the hunters and angler standpoint and all three of them embraced the PLPW initiative and so the department decided to make that a permanent program which they did in 2001. Um, under the PLPW access program uh, we have hunter management areas, walk-in hunting, and walk-in fishing. Between those three programs, uh, last year alone we have over 2.9 million acres that were enrolled. Public access is definitely one of the highest priorities we have in terms of recruiting new hunters and anglers. Without access and without opportunities, folks can't get out and hunt and fish, so access is critical. Uh, our commission is working to obtain access wherever we can in the state uh, through partnerships with the federal land management agencies. It's one of the department's highest priorities right now. People, when they either purchase or, or uh, apply for licenses, can donate to Access Yes, and every dollar that's donated goes directly to easements. We cannot use that for administrative purposes, um, printing up atlases, anything like that. It goes strictly to easements. For every dollar that's donated, the PLPW access program can provide approximately 4.2 acres of access. And when you consider that we sell over 600,000 licenses annually, um, if everybody donated just one dollar, that would be huge. We have to turn down landowners in some situations because we may not have the funds to enroll their properties. And, and so if everybody donated to access, yes, uh, we could then enroll those properties and the amount of access would just keep increasing each year. Like While landowners have been very supportive of the access initiative, the Commission has encountered other barriers to private lands acquisition. We primarily right now are working through partnerships with private landowners and the federal land management agencies. Uh, we can't do it alone, and half of the state's privately owned, and we didn't have private landowners to have those partnerships to access their properties for hunting and fishing, we'd be hurting. Currently, we have over 600 landowners enrolled in our PLPW access programs. Right we have landowners that are uh, now actively searching that, us uh, out uh, to enroll their properties, uh, which is a very good thing. The barriers right Basically, now, the main like barriers to our commission acquiring oh, property is funding. <laughs> we have very <laughs> limited oh, funds oh, for acquisition. Oh, We're working with private landowners on conservation easements and access easements, uh, as opposed to outright fee title acquisitions, uh, which really help us. Uh, we did a survey in 2006, and we asked hunters and anglers a series of questions. 74% of those respondents said that they increased their hunting and fishing activities because of our programs. Efforts to promote outdoor recreation in Wyoming when we return. The personal benefits of participation in outdoor activities are many. I think it's important to teach hunting 
and fishing for the future. So this is a 20 gauge. And the lessons that we teach when we're out there in the field with someone who's new to the game or some young person who's just coming into the game, those are life lessons. They aren't just hunting and fishing lessons. They're lessons about honesty and integrity and respect for the land and respect for people. Some of the things that uh, people can do to uh, learn what's available in the, in the out of doors and what's available through the Wyoming Game and Fish Department is by, first of all, going to the website. There's all different categories of the things that the Wyoming Game and Fish Department offers. There's a, a, an entire list, it's, a, it's longer than my arm, of places that you can go see that are featured in there uh, that you can just travel to and enjoy. If I had advice for somebody who wanted to start, it would be to find somebody who does it and say, hey, can I come too? I don't know anybody who would turn you down. Show what you would do to cross the fence. If someone that, that has never hunted or fished wants to get started and they don't have a family tie or a friendship tie, I would recommend that they visit with their local game warden, their local bi biologist from the game and fish department, uh, perhaps a conservation club, a hunting and fishing club. If they're in a larger community in Wyoming, they can go to a regional game and fish office and visit with one of our uh, educational HR specialists. And they would walk out with an armload of uh, publications to help them get started. Wyoming's hunters and anglers can influence their peers to participate. And those looking to get involved have plenty of resources at their disposal. Experiencing seeing the animals, even when you're out in the out of doors, you know, a lot for me is to go out and just actually view. My favorite animal is elk, but and I, every time I see an elk, I consider that a, that, that's an attaboy because you don't just get to see elk every day. I like big mule deer, I like deer, white-tailed deer, I like all the big animals, but it's that for me when I go out is, is just seeing. I don't have to kill, I don't have to, just seeing the animals is a, is a large part of why I go out in the out of doors and why I think a lot of people do. They enjoy seeing antelope on the range, they enjoy seeing the mule deer, white-tailed deer along the river, in the woods. It turns out extreme athletes may make excellent hunters. When they have that experience, they immediately recognize the value because they've been there, just not in the same way. They felt those same feelings of exhilaration, of solitude, of peace. That thought, that memory comes back to you every time you're in the, when you're away from it. To, so then that brings you back to it when you're ready to go back to the woods. You go back because, boy, I enjoyed that part of, of, of that time when I was out there. So you always go back and you look at, you try to get those same feelings, those same smells, those same uh, views that you had before. So you may go back to the same place. Most people that actively participate in hunting and fishing, it's a family-oriented activity. Uh, they have camaraderie with people with like interests. It takes them outdoors into many different parts of Wyoming. They get in touch with nature and uh, learn about habitats and the problems going on in Wyoming. The future of Wyoming's outdoor heritage and wildlife management is largely in the hands of hunters and anglers. Only by recruiting new participants and retaining present outdoor enthusiasts will Wyoming's system of wildlife management and outdoor legacy remain. I think it's important that we as hunters and anglers work actively to assure the future of hunting and angling. Moreover, I think that it's important that we do so in a manner that reflects the things that are most important about that heritage. The opportunity to teach somebody else, to see that light in their eyes when they experience that feeling of being in touch with a wild place, being a part of that wild place, 
that's one of the great feelings of an adult life, I think.